DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The top stories this week. An explosion at a Mitsubishi polysilicon plant causes five deaths. The US government opens a new Chinese solar trade investigation. Solar support cuts put German PV transition at risk. Chile is to build a 110 megawatt CSP plant. And Deutsche Bank hails a second solar gold rush. An explosion at Mitsubishi Materials Yokaichi polysilicon plant has resulted in the deaths of five workers with a further 12 injured. A spokesman for the company confirmed to PV Tech that the accident had taken place at 2.05 p.m. local time on the 8th of January. The plant is located in Mie Prefecture on the main Japanese island of Honshu. The incident was said to have happened during scheduled maintenance with the plant's heat exchangers when an explosion occurred and a fire started, later extinguished by fire services. It is suspected that the explosion was caused by a reaction involving trichlorosilane as the heat exchangers were removed for cleaning. The US government has officially opened an anti-dumping and anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese solar products imported into the US. This latest complaint has been called not clever by China's official industry body and has also met resistance closer to home. The decision by the US International Trade Commission follows a petition by Solar World at the end of 2013 in which it claimed that existing anti-dumping levies averaging 31% were being circumvented. Solar World claims some of China's manufacturers are exploiting a loophole by using cells from Taiwan and elsewhere for their modules. Solar World also instigated the long-running trade dispute between European and Chinese manufacturers that ended with the application of a minimum price floor for solar products entering the EU. The China Chamber of Commerce of Machinery and Electronics, which negotiated the EU deal on behalf of the country's manufacturers, has condemned the tactics taken in the US. Likewise, the US solar sector far from universally supports Solar World's petition, with the country's Solar Energy Industries Association finding the latest legal move the wrong approach. The US ITC will report the findings of its investigation on the 24th of February. The current rate of cutbacks to support for solar energy could put the German energy transition at risk, the country's solar trade body has warned. The Federal Solar Industry Association, BSW Solar, has claimed that while the cost of solar fell by 25% in the last two years, support schemes for the technology have been cut in half. The country installed 3.3 gigawatts in 2013, according to BSW, figures in line with the Federal Network Agency's data in early December. That compares to 7.6 gigawatts in the previous year. Carsten Kornig, Managing Director of BSW Solar, warned that the new government's continued feed-in tariff digression plans must be slowed. The cost of supporting Germany's installed renewables, and solar power in particular, has become the focal point for those seeking lower energy prices in the country. The new coalition government has set out a renewable energy target range for 2025 of between 55% and 60% by 2035. Chile's Ministry of Energy and Government Agency for Entrepreneurship, COFO, has awarded a tender for South America's first concentrated solar power plant. The tender for the 110 megawatt plant was awarded to sustainability technology developer Abengoa. The CSP plant will use molten salt power technology, allowing energy to be stored for up to 17.5 hours without direct solar radiation. A subsidy of 20 million US dollars in government funding is being provided for the project, along with access to 500 million in additional funding. The project, named Cerro Dominador, will be built in Maria Elena in the Antofagasta region, with 10,600 mirrors arranged in a circle with an area of 2.5 miles to shine sunlight onto a central tower 243 feet high. The plant will be owned by Minera El Chesoro, part of the mining group Antofagasta Minerals, and will help meet Chile's renewable energy ambitions for 20% renewable energy by 2020. And finally, in a new detailed report by Deutsche Bank's US-based solar industry analysts, the PV industry is said to be heading into its second gold rush, with a base demand of 46 gigawatts in 2014, topped by an expected 56 gigawatts in 2015. Deutsche Bank is echoing a story from last week's edition, with NPD SolarBuzz predicting 49 gigawatts of installations this year. 
However, Deutsche Bank noted in the report that there was potential for demand to be higher than forecasted in 2014 due to the key markets of China, Japan and the US exceeding projected installation levels as markets build considerable momentum. Despite the European market suffering a decline, Deutsche Bank projects that Europe would account for between 7 and 8 gigawatts of demand this year. Emerging markets are also expected to make a considerable contribution, ranging from 12 to 17 gigawatts of demand, notably from India, South Africa, South America, Southeast Asia and Australia. Indeed, Australia alone ended last year with over 1.6 million PV systems installed on rooftops, representing almost 3.1 gigawatts of rooftop solar installed across the country. However, despite Deutsche Bank's bullish analysis, it may be underestimating demand dynamics in some key markets, such as the UK. According to the bank's analysis, the UK market demand is expected to increase to 1.3 gigawatts in 2014. And that's all for this edition. Be sure to catch next week's newscast on Tuesday, and in the meantime you can keep up to date with all the very latest news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.